starting a revolution hey all right i am popping on let's see who will join me let me see you let me see you now where are you logging on from hi oh it's friday what time is it where you are let me know where you're signing on from what time it is What's the temperature where you are? Oh, can we turn on the air conditioning? Thinking about that right now. I'm in Balmy, Ghana, West Africa, saying hello, hello, hello to you. Mm -hmm. Hi, how is everybody today? Hi, Joy. Uh, let me see who else is in the house. Atlanta, George is in the house. Who Ghana is in the house. Um, where are you signing on from? Let me know. Let me see. California is in the house. Okay. Um, hmm. Ghana is upstairs. <laughs> Virginia's in the house. <laughs> Cali, Cali. Hey, hey, hey. It's 11 p.m. in the UK. All right. Good. Miami, Michigan. Okay. There we go. Where else are people coming on? San Diego. Okay. Georgia. I want to come to Georgia in August. You know, Carlos Santana and Earth, Wind and & Fire are doing a concert there. Oh, my gosh. You know, that's just going to be off the charts, okay? Oregon. I went fishing on a river in Oregon. I love Oregon. It's beautiful. Or Virginia. Why is this one doing this? Maybe I should take it off and just have it on. Uh, keep saying connection. Okay, glad to see you, too. Glad to see you. I know. Uh, Carmel by the Sea. I've heard that's lovely. Haven't been there. Nigeria, 11 p.m. Okay. Um, how's everybody doing? What are you thinking about? Florida is in the house. St. Louis is in the house. I'm loving this. You know, it's a small world after all, isn't it? I mean, here I am sitting in Ghana, West Africa, and you are where you are, and yet we are connecting on this night. What's everybody's plans for Friday night? Let me see. It's 10 p.m. where I am. Turks and Caicos. Ooh, that's another place I have not been. I would love to come to. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Well, for flood victims, is that true? Um, what are the concerns you have on your heart? Because I thought I would just pop on, you know, and just see how everybody's doing. I know I haven't been on in a while. And um, the reason I haven't been on in a while is because I just finished writing a book. Yes, I was deep in, okay, deep in the book. So I have finally emerged. I am celebrating the completion of my manuscript, South Africa. Okay. I love it. I love how we're all everywhere and we're still together in one little room. So um, I finished my next book. So please be praying for me that I get a, a great deal and it comes out soon. California's in the house. Um, and then the next thing I did was completed the Right to Be Heard Masterclass. So for all of those of you who have been asking me how to write books, how to go about it, um, I finished a master class on how to write a book. Ah, can you imagine? I finally finished it. So I'm really excited about that. Also, I just finished the second installment of my fashion line, MMH, Me, Myself, and Him Collections. So I'm going to be heading to the States and doing some pop-up sales. That's going to be exciting. And... Yes, I've got so much news tonight. I, it's, it's just amazing. My puppy, my baby, Coco, had six puppies. So we've been deep in motherhood around here on top of everything else. And I'm giving a shout out to the CDC who will not let me fly puppies to the States. Um, they say that we're on some rabies list. And I want to know what rabies list that is because CDC people... Are you judging a country based on dogs walking around in the street? 
Or do you understand that people who are taking their dogs on the plane take good care of them and they have all their shots? And why can't they take a test like you do for COVID before you get on the plane? How do you just cut off and just say people can't bring their dogs? Huh? I had to get that off my chest because I have been upset. I won't make it to Houston for pop-up this time, but guess what? You'll be able to go online and order the new stuff. We will be loading new pictures up sometime next week. I have so many amazing new pieces. I can't stand it, okay? They're fabulous. I'm excited about sharing them with you. All African fabrics and signature shapes that I've created that you're just gonna love, like kimonos and overcoats and throws and things, you know. I'm mixing batik fabrics and African fabrics and kente, they're fabulous. So I cannot wait for you to be able to go on the website at MMH Collections to see the new stuff. Okay, oh, you're going on a date with your husband. Okay. Oh, she says she's a chaplain. She needs encouragement because she's just tired. Hi, Terry. How's Jamaica? Mm -mm -mm. Makes me want to get some jerk chicken. I'm trying to go plant-based. I don't know what's going to happen with me with trying to be plant-based because I do love me some chicken, okay? I really, really do. But as you know, um, I'm trying to cut a lot of stuff out of my diet that's acidic. Um, I'm coming to Chicago. I will be having a pop-up sale at Barbara Bates Shop on the 20th and the 21st of August. So put it on your calendar. Tell your friends I will be in the house at Barbara Bates. Okay, so look on my IG and you will see a posting for that. We're going to be there Saturday from 11 to 6 and Sunday from 1 to 6. Okay, so... Um, I will be posting. The website is mmhcollections.com. So you can go on and check out right now. We're uploading new stuff. So the new stuff is not there yet. We're literally photographing and uploading like within the next week. So keep it on your radar. It's going to be exciting and you're going to love it. Lots of great stuff for fall, but in African fabrics that you will not see anywhere. And guess what? They're all one of a kind pieces. So you will not see yourself going and coming. No one else will have your outfit. Okay. How about that? I made you special because you are special. Now, for those of you who've always been bugging me about how to write a book, now is the time to sign up for the Right to Be Heard Masterclass. Um, Tega, can you put in the chat? Uh, the information, or you can go to my website at michellehammond.com and hit the pop-up for Right to Be Heard, and you'll be able to see the details of that class and um, join me. I'm going to actually be coaching you on how to write your book, walking through the whole process with you, giving you all the information that you need to know. And we have a very exciting MMA hangout coming up next Saturday. Not this Saturday, but next Saturday with Jamal Bryant. We're going to be talking about post-pandemic relationships. Woohoo! You know that's going to be all the way live because you know Jamal is just a ball of fire. And uh, so we're going to be talking about relationships. And uh, I'm just waving at everybody. Thank you for showing me some love. We need all the love we can have, right? So how are you feeling about what's going on in the world? Is the world up for grabs or what? We got floods over here, new viruses over here, fires <laughs> over here. Where do you think this is all heading? You know, um, I think that we have to be really strategic with our prayers. I think that we've got to um, understand that these are the birth pangs of the end. Um, and that the end will surely come and that these things have to occur before the end can come. Um, how do we pray? In the meantime, we pray that we're able to stand and weather the storms of life. Um, it's really important for us to not panic, 
to not be fearful, to understand the signs of the times like the um, brothers of Issachar understood the seasons and the times and know how to proceed forward. And no man knows the day or the hour. So let's not sit down on the job and say Jesus is coming tomorrow because we don't know. And he's told us to occupy until he comes. And so it's very important for us to have an occupation mentality of being impactful and purposeful and redeeming the time that we have. Okay, so it is very, very important for us not to sit down on the job now, but to really focus on being even more of an influence for Christ, not by what we say, but by what we do and how we behave ourselves. All right, we are here to set standards in the earth realm by changing the atmosphere when we walk into a room by how we carry ourselves, how we respond and react to things. Um, and you know what? Here's my thing. I, I'm really worried about us because I feel that a lot of us are not as deep in the word as we need to be at this time and that we have a lot of personal opinions floating around versus what God says. It is imperative that we know what God says and that we get in alignment with what he says because only his word will stand in the end. My mother always used to say, uh, opinions are like behinds, some are cuter than others. And that is the way I look at the way our thought process now, because everybody's in their truth. But what is the truth and who sets the standard for that truth? So we've got to make sure that we are in alignment with God, that we're walking in agreement with his word. And sometimes that word is not going to be comfortable. I'm just going to keep it real with you. It's not always going to be comfortable. Um, you know, we were talking today about some people and um, the lifestyles that they've chosen to live, but yet they're beautiful people. They're wonderful people. And uh, hi, Gina, how are you doing? Um, you know, and you think, well, what's going to happen, Jesus, when they see you? Because they're clearly uh, not living according to, to what you said, but they're wonderful people. Um, and, you know, we've got to understand the different uh, levels of what we're dealing with here. There's sin, which is missing the mark. That means, oops, you know, um, I didn't intentionally do that, but I did it. And now I've caught myself. I'm going to correct myself. Okay. And then there's transgression where you thought about it, but you still proceeded on, you know, so it, it's purposeful sin. It's not missing the mark. It is now hitting the mark on purpose. Okay. And then there's iniquity where it no longer bothers you. You don't think about it. It's what you want to do. You do it. You're not even convicted about it anymore. Okay. Um, so there are these different levels. There's sin, there's transgression, there's iniquity. Now, some of us have been called out of some lifestyles. Um, and, and we might still be struggling with those things, but if we choose to do them purposefully, um, God sees that as willful transgression and iniquity. Okay. And we've got to be very clear about that. Um, some of our urges are not going to leave us when we come out. Everybody, um, doesn't seem to master that well. Um, every now and then I used to smoke. I'm not, you know, smoking bothers your body. So I'm going to say a sin. Because it's not good for you, okay? Anything that's not good for you is sin, really, okay? God doesn't want us hurting ourselves, and that's why he says not to do certain things. So I used to smoke. I was a heavy smoker. Um, my first book, I think I was still smoking. <laughs> I was, I'm just going to be real with you. You know, I loved a good cigarette. It kept me awake. It kept me from eating. Uh, kept my weight down. You know, a lot of reasons why I like to smoke my cigarette. But God called me out of that. He said, can I have that cigarette? And I gave it to him. Now, I'm going to tell you to this day, every now and then, I have a dream about smoking. And I wake up and go, I mean, it's so real. It feels like I actually really smoked, right? So I'm like, oh, my God, I smoked a cigarette. Now, <laughs> so that, I mean, I'm using that as a point in case that there's a word that says sin uh, sits at the door and desires to have you, but you must master it. Just because you have the feeling or the desire does not mean you are supposed to follow through. You are to master 
that desire because you have chosen a different path, a different way of walking to, and to be in alignment with God, to be in alignment with his purposes, to uh, walk in righteousness for his name's sake. Uh, this is not just about you. It's about who you represent. OK, so um, if we're uh, setting a standard of holiness and godliness, there's a certain way we carry ourselves, um, whether that is our preference or not. We, we, we keep um, denying the flesh until it is a habit to deny it and it no longer masters us. OK, so um, I just want to just pull your coattail about, you know, your mindset about things. Uh, what you're accepting, what you're assimilating into, which compromises you're making, um, and know that it affects the kingdom. It affects the kingdom. Uh, it's not just the people who are making um, religion political that um, leave a bad taste in the mouth of people, but those who don't master their life and don't uh, reflect uh, God's nature and uh, part of God's nature is self-discipline. It is self-mastery. Um, it is um, denying those things are not good for us that impact others wrongly. Um, so when we're in alignment with God, those things begin to fall off or we make the conscious decision not to indulge if it hasn't fallen off yet. Okay. So I might have an impulse, but not act on it, you know. I might see that fine man and go, Ooh, but I can't follow through on that. Okay. Not to that point. You know the point I'm talking about. Okay. So I just want to come on and just encourage you tonight to keep walking it out. These are treacherous times that we're in and um, we need to walk circumspectly. We need to get a little bit more sober about the stand that we're making on certain issues about um, how we view uh, life through the eyes of God versus um, what society is saying is okay and what's normal. We are normalizing a lot of things that are not in accordance with God's will or purpose or plan for humanity and for our lives. Um, these things will have a detrimental outcome. Um, and just because everybody agrees with something doesn't mean it's right. You know, my mother used to say when I was a kid, when I would say, but everybody's doing it. She would say, well, if everybody was running off a cliff, would you run, to, run off to? No, I wouldn't because I know I'd hurt myself. So let's keep it real, people. Let's not be frogs in the pot, not realizing that we're boiling because we've been sitting in the hot water too long. Okay. God loves you. He wants the best for your life. Mm. Yes, Crystal. I mean, sometimes we just have to walk it out. You know, um, some decisions we make that are good for us are not easy decisions. They are, um, yes, they, they are things that um, hurt now, but feel better later. You know, it's just like when you get surgery or you get a shot, you know, um, it doesn't hurt at the moment, but it gives you health later. So, that's called setting boundaries for yourself, mastering your life, taking your life back, knowing what's not fruitful, what's detrimental, what's um, slowly bleeding you, um, dying by degrees, you know. Um, and so you just have to stand on your stand on your block, stand on your block for Jesus. OK, I see I've got fluctuating um, Internet, but I just wanted to come on and um, share with you things that were coming up. Um, and tell you that I love you. Um, God loves you even more. And, and you need to love yourself as God loves you so that you make right choices for your life. OK, uh, when you love yourself, you turn down those things that, you know, are detrimental to your health, spiritually, emotionally, physically and spiritually. So we set boundaries. Hey, there's my little brother. Hi, Ian. How you doing? You know, and sometimes. Uh, those, those those decisions don't feel great in the beginning, but guess what? You can't pay for peace. And when you lie down that night and you own yourself and nothing else is mastering you in your life, you lie down in peace and you had a good REM sleep. OK, um, and I know I'm just all about the business right now, being productive for God and letting him 
um, put those things in place in my life that need to be there. And anyone who doesn't honor or respect my space, my thoughts, uh, my desires, um, I keep moving. You know, um, I'm not uh, allowing myself to be pulled one way or the other. You know, there's a pressure out there that is, will cause you to cave in at times. You think, well, maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe it's just me because everybody else seems to be all right with it. No, no, no. Where is God with it? Okay. Let's make godly choices. All right. Let's make choices that honor us, honor God, and um, keep us in the safe zone. Keep us in the peace zone. Peace, I'm telling you, peace is expensive. It'll cost you some stuff. Okay. But in the end, you are far more fruitful. You see all my books behind me? Look at how many books I've written. Isn't that astounding? 40 something books. And um, for those of you who've been asking me about writer's class, now's the time. And uh, uh, well, that's it. I'm so tired and sleepy and delirious because I just finished taping the last episodes of the class. Um, so I will be Popping on a little more often now that I've gotten some stuff off my desk. See, I had to set a boundary. I had to sacrifice something in order to be able to focus and do what I needed to get done. And a lot of us are too distracted these days. We're pulled in 20 different directions. And in order to be able to move forward, you've got to focus. You've got to shut some stuff down from time to time and say, hey, I'm in this zone and I'm finishing well. Um, I'm not allowing myself to be distracted and pulled in 20 different directions. I am going to focus and move forward and accomplish the task at hand. And that's what I had to do. So I had to take a little vacation from popping on and doing lives and all of that because it was sucking up my airspace, if you know what I mean. So, guys, listen. Okay, but the last thing I want to say to you. Hey, Carolyn, how are you? I was talking about you the other day. Um, I was in the studio with my music director and I was talking about uh, your husband, Leonard, and I told him to look up casting and majors. Um, and so he's listening to your music. Isn't that something? But um, I want to say one last thing. We're heading into the month of August. August 6th is my birthday, by the way. Okay. I'll accept any blessings you want to send. <laughs> Anyway, for me, my life always shifts in the month of September. So after the eighth month of new beginnings, I kind of like my life just takes off in September. I have noticed this systematically. Do you know the month that your life takes off? Because there is a pattern. Um, and, and so I'm saying this to say that I feel that we are coming into a season of serious shift. Okay. Um, where it's time to pivot, um, to let some things fall away. Um, some, um, some people are going to head out in a new direction that's actually not that new, but it's something that you've been putting off. And now is the time to jump into the stream because a new season is upon us and it is a season of great opportunity. While the world is in a state of flux and worrying about recession and all of that, I believe that the children of God are actually getting ready to shift into a new season of major gains if they take advantage of the time and walk wisely. So why am I saying that? You need to press into God now. You need to have that prayer time, that quiet time, and really open your ears to hear what thus saith the Lord for you personally in this season, because he's going to start to give people new beginnings and new um, new avenues of doing things, new ways of doing things. Now, you might not uh, shift what you're doing, but you might do it differently. So if there's going to be subtle shifts, some will be major, but some will be subtle. And so I want you to really get sensitized in the spirit to hear what God is saying to you in this hour about the way forward for you. So that is my closing remark to you, to get sensitive, to get serious, to get sober, to press in 
and receive the instructions for this season because things are going to shift very quickly and things are going to come upon you very quickly. I, I just feel very prophetic right now. I don't, I don't usually go into this mode, but I just have a great sense that things are shifting and changing and that it's like the changing, it's the troubling of the waters at Bethesda, that if you get in at that moment, um, your new flow is going to start and you're going to be amazed at what God does for you, through you and in you in this season. So get ready. Whatever gifts you've been sitting on, start to sharpen those tools and get ready to utilize them because the door is going to open and it's going to be a Kairos moment. You need to step through, step in and do what you feel you're led to do in the season. He's going to draw you through and take you to a new place. And it's going to blow your mind. I, I just feel that that's for some people out there. You know who I'm talking to. You know if it's you. Um, you you're sensing change in your system. You've been wanting something to shift. And God is saying the season is upon us. So get ready. Line up your ducks. Be ready. Be also ready. You know, uh, my... Um, Music ministry is getting ready to get a distribution deal. And uh, while we're waiting on the paperwork, we have been in the studio writing and recording because when they come and they say, what you got? We're going to go, bam, here it is. We're not going to have to say, I'll get back to you. This is a time to be ready. Occupy and be ready. You won't have the time to go back to the drawing board or consult with yourself. You need to know exactly what you would do in the instance. If the deal was offered to you, what demands would you make? What do you require? What do you want? In this season, take the time to sit and journal and write what you want to have happen in your next season. Write in great detail what you want so that you'll be ready with the answer when the opportunity is presented to you. Okay, so that is the word of the Lord to you today. Shifts, new beginnings, pivoting, but being ready, being ready for the change, being ready for the opportunity when it knocks at your door. Hey, I love you. I wanna pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for everyone under the sound of my voice right now that in this season that they would be in a state of readiness, that they would clearly hear your voice, follow and obey. I pray, Lord, for new opportunities, for effectual open doors. I thank you for doors that are open that no man can shut and that some doors are shutting that no man can open. But we thank you for them because they are not dead ends. They are yield signs and detours to the greater blessing, the greater level, the, the greater next. And so, Father, I pray for those that are listening right now that they would be encouraged and ready to step into their next that it would be a season of great shift um, and great provision that you said, Lord God, that you would um, give us a feast in the midst of famine. And so while the world is, is looking um, to themselves for a source, we look to you as the source and we receive from you right now everything that you want everything that we want and everything that we need in our lives. We know it's available to us. Hi, Sharon. How are you? I love you and miss you. I see you. So I'm just telling you now that uh, get ready, get ready, get ready, as Tada would say, T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes, you know, join me on Saturday. Jamal Bryan is just awesome. He's, he's my bad little brother. But he's deep and he's profound and he's a shaker and mover. We're going to have an amazing off the charts MMH hangout. Go to my website and get registered today or go to Eventbrite for MMH hangout. We are there. Um, let me see what else. So that's everything. I've told you everything. Writer's class, hangout, fashion line, music coming. It's, it's just, it's a season where everything is happening, man. So just get ready, get ready for it. Accept it in your spirit right now so you won't get scared and run back and, and, and not think that you deserve what you're getting ready to get. You deserve it. God's laid it up for you. He's going to give it to you. Um, receive it. Receive it with joy. Receive it in peace, okay? I love you guys. Talk to you next time.